What's up, everybody? Welcome back. You've got your firestorm here. We've got me, Sierra. <laughs> We've got me, me, and Martha. And we are back with our Arabian part series. And we're talking about the part of spirit today. Yeah. I'm excited. Let's do it. Before we jump into that, if you don't already, follow us over on our socials. Follow us on Instagram at the Stars Made Me Podcast. And don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. It's basically a whole second podcast over there. And we have a really good time. So definitely check us out over there. And also, if you haven't listened to our other part episode, we started with the part of fortune. And this is our second part episode. So go ahead and check out the part of fortune because you'll see how the part of fortune and the part of spirit are kind of like a yin and yang to one another, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I had found too. Because I was, as soon as I started researching part of spirit, I was like, oh, we definitely could have made this like a a one episode, the two of them together, you know, because they really do have a lot to do with each other. I yeah. was thinking that too. I was watching a bunch of videos and everything I could learn about part of spirit because I haven't dove into these yet. And everyone put them together and yeah. it kind of makes it hard to differentiate between the two. Yeah, I definitely recommend listening to that part, the part of fortune before you listen to this one, because we'll probably be referring to part of fortune throughout this episode. And it'll be mm -hmm. nice to know what your two different parts are for part of fortune and part of spirit and be able to see them together. Because like we mentioned in part of fortune, it, it has a lot to do with the moon and this has a lot to do with the sun. So those complementary energies. So anyways, yeah, make sure you go and listen to that episode before you dive into this one, or just, you know, have an idea of what your part of fortune sign is and your part mm -hmm. of spirit sign when we're getting mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. yeah and the little glyph for them i don't think we described it it's in the artwork when you go onto like our instagram you can see the uh glyph for the part of fortune it's basically a circle with a cross in it kind of looks like a railroad crossing sign to me and then yeah. the part of spirit is another circle but instead it's just one vertical line through it and that's the part of spirit so should we get into the part of spirit what it what it does what it means yeah let's get into it <laughs> okay i guess we should mention why there are parts and how they can be used. I know we talked about it in Part of Fortune, but just in case you are listening to this one first and you don't want to listen to Part of Fortune first, normally these parts are used in zodiacal releasing, which is quite the topic. And mm -hmm. I am I don't think any of us have a full grip on it yet, but we want yeah. to one day. I'm like, this is why I'm taking a bit of a like humble role in the part series because I feel like it's hard to learn one thing at a time and then teach one thing at a time without having like taken in all of the information and I feel like zodiacal releasing is such a major part of the parts of like learning the parts and how they can be useful because I think the parts are less like a a placement like a planet would be mm -hmm. in your chart and it's more like a timing technique and trying to see when you will be coming into fortune when you will have uh, major milestones in your career like it's much more of a timing technique and the technique is called zodiacal releasing and I think that would be a great episode to bring on someone who uses that in their practice because I need someone to explain it to me like I'm five. Like that's that's genuinely <laughs> and it takes it like hurts my Aries feelings to know that like this is something I cannot just learn and be good at right away. But that's sort of the role that I'm taking when learning these parts. Yeah, when I was learning about part of fortune and part of spirit so far, I've been really having to work my brain around that they're not like rocks unmoving things mm -hmm. in your chart they're like showing where energy ebbs and flows like their calculations like, that's like a their portal. calculations but the way i understand them is like okay yeah at some point in your life when money is ebbing and flowing the way it will ebb and flow is shown in your part of fortune or mm -hmm. the way your spiritual connection is with the universe ebbs and flows in the archetype of whatever sign it's in if that makes yeah. sense like it represents the way it moves not that's the really way it helpful. is all the time I think the way that like makes sense for me is imagining it like the death star and there's that one spot in the death star and like it's not a vulnerable spot but it's like it's almost like this is 
the point in the chart that is vulnerable to this energy and is going to suck in that energy and return it back to you. Like it feels like a bit of a portal to me. And I just say that point in the Death Star because it's like, I don't know. That's the only thing that came to mind, but I actually don't think there's any parallels to it. So please don't come for me. <laughs> yeah. no, I love that. Yeah. It's like the way it feels when those things are happening, like mm-hmm. when the themes of relationships, money, whatever it is that you yeah. want to learn about through zodi- zodiacal releasing, this shows you like how it's going to feel when they're happening and flowing. And the way that we explained it with Part of Fortune, I still want to say there's like validity to it. Like it was a very modern take. For me, what I drew away from Part of Fortune is when you tap into this energy over here, fortune will find you, you know, and that Mm -hmm. was actually really helpful for me. And in a moment after we had recorded that in a moment um, where I was feeling like a little bit of that lack mentality, I went over to a friend and I helped her organize something and I helped her clear out and declutter. And that's very Virgo with my Part of Fortune and Virgo. And, you know, I got away from my screen and just was of service. And when I went back to my phone, I saw that I had an online order, like someone placed an order for camp. And so that was such like a literal translation of I tapped into being of service and helping someone literally declutter. And then I received, um, I wouldn't call it a fortune, but I did receive an order, which is very abundant for me. And that's very exciting. So, you know, that modern take still still holds a lot of truth for me, I think. Agreed. I think everything that you just said fully relates to what we're saying now to like, when you're getting abundance, it's going to feel like when you're living in that archetype of whatever sign Mm, it's in. Yeah, like tapping into the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Like you tapped into Virgo energy and then abundance ebbed through. Also, I feel like there's just I really do feel like in so many of these series that we do, there's such a divine timing to it where these are this is the time Mm -hmm. every time we do one of these it's it's a meant to be type of episode recording. And I really feel like the whole the whole this whole podcast, the whole idea of it is that, you know, we have learned so much on our own, but we are learning as we are doing this. And this is a way of us fueling our, you know, seeking of knowledge and everything. And I think that, you know, maybe there will come a time after this part series that will come together with like, okay, here's an overview of everything Mm -hmm. now that we've understood little by little. But I think that's kind of the beauty of astrology is discovering it little by little. And I know that so many people listening, Mm -hmm. they are literally discovering it along with us. So in a way, I think it's a blessing that we're not like in the deep, complicated, you know, parts of it. I think maybe we need to surface scratch a little bit so that we can all gain this understanding of like the generalization of what these energies even mean and then dive into that. Okay, now how do we calculate? How do we use that to our advantage? Advantage, you know thank you for that reframe yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need that my Aries is so butthurt about like not being an expert at something within half a second so that's like thank you so much for that <laughs> yeah that's what we're here for we're all like I mean we're learning with this podcast that's that's the whole point of it you know is is to learn and to share and we'll we promise we're going to share with everybody when we get more information and maybe you know if you are listening and you are an expert or know an expert on this reach out to us let Please, us know we're yeah. Yeah, we're happy to learn more. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, come be a guest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And on that note, I guess what the, you know, most tangible way of relating the part of spirit back to the part of fortune is that, and also they can be known as the lot of spirit and the lot Mm -hmm. of fortune. I by default say part. Um, But the, the part of fortune was calculated using the moon, whereas this the part of spirit is calculated with the sun. And so it is the the spirit that we bring into our actions to achieve what we aspire to achieve because that sun energy is that external energy. It's that ego energy. It's the, you know, it's the, the brightness, whereas that moon energy is that softness and that internal energy. I feel like part of fortune when we've talked about it is when we tap into those, those internal energies and really get in that like moon flow, whereas the part of spirit seems to be a little bit more of an external shine, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so calculating this lot of spirit is a little bit different or actually it's pretty much the exact same except how you would calculate the lot of fortune Uh, you basically reverse it for the day and night so the lot of spirit you add up your ascendant plus your sun minus your moon if you're born during the day and then for night 
charts, you add up your ascendant plus your moon and minus your sun. And again, if you didn't listen to the first episode, we're using the technique where Aries starts at zero degrees, Taurus starts at 30 degrees, Gemini starts at 60 degrees, and so on and so forth. So actually, like five degrees Gemini is going to be 65 degrees on the zodiac wheel. So just remember to keep that in mind. You're not adding 30 plus 22 minus four. Um, And then basically the degree that you get at at the end of that calculation, again, that's going to be the degree in the zodiac wheel. And then you can discover what sign, what degree of what sign that's in. And I would urge, even if you think your uh, software got the calculations correct, I would urge you to just try it anyway. Like we had a couple of patrons reach out on Discord and be like, hey, can we double check this? And I think double checking is A, is just like nice just to make sure that you know your placement. And B, kind of gives you like a sense of empowerment of like, oh, I'm able to create this calculation. I'm able to do this and to discover this placement for myself. Yeah. yeah. And if you're feeling any sort of confused about the calculations, we really broke it down in part of fortune. So just mm-hmm. rewind it back to there and listen, because it will take too long for us to explain again. Yeah. And I also, I like that we <laughs> in through this research, I've found that part of spirit can be channeling our kingly leadership skills because I'm <laughs> yes. just thinking of like, the sun be i mean if you go to i'm just thinking of versailles because versailles is you know what louis the 14th and it's like the sun king and there's literally Mm. just suns everywhere and like it's really kind of fun because i'm creating my own like logo right now and it is the sun and so i'm like oh part of spirit this is how i'm completely connecting to all of these things i'm on vacation right now put a fake tattoo on that's golden is the sun really feeling the sun (laughs) right now that's what i mean by divine timing of doing these episodes but you know the channeling our kingly leadership skills that i mean if you think of it in that era of kings like that Mm -hmm. spirit that was you know, yes, it was like, you know, a birthright, but it was the spirit of the king too, that people, you know, worshipped pretty much. And it does take spirit to give off that kind of energy. And I see we have another quote here uh, from oracularjake.com, that if something is spirited, that generally means there's passion, vigor, and heart being put into it. And that just like screams sun energy. And it's very Leo energy, but it feels more like we're tapping into sun energy than just like a signs energy. Like, I really Mm -hmm. feel like it's tapping into that planet or, you know. So yeah, I agree. And when I first see the word spirit now where I am in my life, I am I like immediately go to spiritual and like more of the soul thing. But this form of spirit is more in like in colloquial terms. It's more like school spirit. Like who is who's bringing the energy? Who's bringing the fun? Who's bringing the yeah, the vigor and the, the passion? Yeah, my understanding of the connection between the two is that where does your spirit of self like we all have a spirit sometimes we call it a soul or whatever. Where does your spirit guide you towards your aspirations? Which is where I see the fortune, the part of fortune is like the end game of your aspirations, but your spirit Mm. is what guides you towards that. Yes, I got that. I saw that a lot in like your guidance, your spiritual guidance. Um, And that's Mm -hmm. why I love how spirit in that will and motivation and determination way is connected to your spiritual energy is connected to your spiritual guidance and your essence as a spirit and it's like what energy are you bringing to the party to make this party fun and i really think they channel together because i think when you're trying to do a lot of things and achieve a lot of things you need your internal torch to be lit and Mm. the only way for that internal torch to be lit so you can keep chugging along is to be living from a place of your actual spirit like okay what makes feels good for me what is like where's my guiding point yeah I love that because, you know, when we're talking about all different placements, you know, okay, like Venus and Mars and action and how and, you know, values and everything, but this is not, it's, it's, it's almost like separating it from personality. I feel like so Mm -hmm. often we use planets and, you know, and points like, you know, even Chiron and things like that, where we, and even asteroids where it, it feels like those energies are infusing part of our personality. And this part series, these like, you know, the part of fortune, part of spirit really feels like it's showing where that, you know, inner source comes from. 
whereas the planets are how they sh how it shows up. Whereas if we tap into this energy, it's giving us what type of energy we really feel that we can really ignite those fires that then activate our true spirit, our true, mm -hmm. I don't know, energy. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of giving like Vesta energy in a bit. Like when if you listen to our Asteroids episode, that's the and one that where passion. it's fueling the fire, right? Like being of service and yeah. fueling the fire for the town. Like that's sort of what I feel like. But instead of doing it for the town or the village, it's like, it's not even a question of whether you're you have you should do it. It's like this is just your innate willpower and like motivation and yeah, inner guide. Um, and so if we're looking at this as like more of a timing um predictive technique, this is what a lot of people look for their career like goals, how they move up in their career, how they seek recognition or feel internal success. And then I also saw it was a lot about like your innate intelligence and then yeah how you seek purpose through meaningful changes so when we see in zodiacal releasing something it being activated in, in like accumulation period uh, which basically just means like a peak period this is often the time in your life when you are going to be making a big change because you're feeling that guidance from within asking you to make a big change and that you need you know it's purposeful and meaningful in that way uh but yeah, bringing it back to more concrete, what we would look at with this point is career goals. Or if it's not career, it's like purpose, kind of North Node-esque. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With that recognition, that internal success. And it's very interesting because we'll get to it. But my my part of spirit is like pretty much conjunct my midheaven. So it's just very interesting that mm. that shows up. You know, this doesn't have to be... Um, I, it, this feels like the satisfaction part. Whereas mm -hmm. I think that when we think about Midheaven or 10th house or, you know, or North Node, it's it's very much purpose. But like you can find your purpose. You can find something that you succeed really well at, but maybe not have that internal fuel fueling you through that avenue. Whereas this is like, okay, what energy can I tap into now that I've like pinpointed, all right, my North node is in Capricorn. Okay. I know that I need to have goals, goals, goals. I know it's here. I need to like build an enterprise and all of that. But then you find your part of spirit and it's like, okay, now what is going to sustain that energy now that I have it focused? How do I keep those fires burning so that I can stay on this focus. It almost feels like that internal, even though we're saying it's external, it's for external purpose, but it seems much more mm -hmm. personal. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode. We hope you're enjoying it. We wanted to take a brief pause to let you know about Patreon and what we're doing over there. Every week we release extra episodes exclusively to our patrons. We discuss the current astrology and give a weather report of what's to come. We also let loose a little and share how we've noticed the planets are affecting us more personally and globally. If you go over to patreon.com slash the stars made me do it, you'll find that we have three affordable tiers to choose from. If you join our pop star tier for just $3, you get access to these public episodes before anybody else. Every week we release these episodes like the one you're listening to right now early. And if you join our Rockstar tier for $6, you get these episodes early as well as access to half of our bonus episodes we release every Thursday. So that means you get to hang out with the Firestorm a little bit more every other week. Lastly, if you join our Superstar tier for $9, you get the works. You get access to the early episodes as well as every week's exclusive astrological weather report. It's a great spot to share what's on your mind astrologically and have you how you've noticed the planets are showing up for you. And if you feel like you don't know enough about astrology to join, don't worry. Many of our patrons feel the same way. But joining us on Patreon, you get to learn so much more about astrology, see how it's affecting you in real time. So go check us out over at patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. I have a question because I'm not a calculator person. And I am an astro.com person and they actually don't even calculate part of spirit. Are they always in opposition, part of spirit and part of fortune? No, but yours is. No. Yours okay. are, though. Yeah, they are. <laughs> That's why. But, okay, I wasn't sure because we're calculating with the same points, like sun, moon, and rising. I know mm -hmm. we're calculating them differently. So I was like, oh, maybe they're always in opposition. Oh, also something that I forgot to mention in the part of fortune about the calculations is if you come to a negative number, you add 360 to that. 
And if you come to a number that's above 360, so say after the calculations, you get to like 443 or something, you subtract 360 from that. You always want to get a positive number between zero and 360. Mm -hmm. Good to know. That is good do, to know. Do we want to talk about how my <laughs> calculation? <laughs> no, I don't yeah. want to talk about how I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually in part of fortune I was totally incorrect in uh, explaining that Martha's part of fortune was an Aries um, because I didn't realize that if it's a negative number you have to add 360 to it so actually we found out that her part of fortune is at 25 Pisces so yeah. just Gemini rising personality crisis <laughs> happening yeah. in real time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy because I preferred the Pisces one anyways so <laughs> but yeah just to say that's again we're all learning and growing and it's that's that's something where I still believe in the divine timing part of it because mm -hmm. when when we question certain things and we're like oh is that what it is? Is that what? It, okay. All right. All right. And then we get like the right answer and you get a relief from it. It feels like maybe in that moment you needed to be like, okay, so I was feeling that and that feeling was on point. So anyways, it within your miscalculations, just all the things that come up are valid. And if you need mm -hmm. help calculating, definitely listen to that part one. Definitely. I wanted to look into because the parts are originally from a Hellenistic astrology standpoint. And so I have a book called Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune by Chris Brennan. He's like a real freaking genius. And he just wrote that it signifies the soul, temper, intelligence and exercise of every power. And I loved that. Excuse me, this dog is licking. <laughs> so so <cute>. licking <laughs> <laughs> I love the exercise of every power because again, that like shows that willpower that the sun brings that like driving kingly force, that, energy. Yeah, that kingly leadership. It's like, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That's that confidence and bringing power, like bringing yeah, a big punch of power with that will and with that motivation. That's, this, this is your school spirit placement. Do you guys have a lot of school spirit? Not at all. Yeah, me neither. I like wanted high school. To. Like my, I mean, me. Did I have school spirit in high school? <laughs> You're like a zero percent for sure. <laughs> zero percent in yeah. high school, though. Oh yeah. my god. College, yes, okay. yes. I'm a late bloomer. I got some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a Capricorn stellium over here. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something I wish. I was more into growing up because I would have been so great at school spirits. Though. Yes. Yeah. I feel like you're the school spirit manifester of, but like not school, but of just like world. Of life. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, he's ready to be your cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's your such a cheerleader. Yeah. 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 My placements definitely say school spirit, but I was trying to be too cool. Oh yeah. That's Scorpio move. Yeah. I remember in um, university, I felt like I always had less energy than everybody. Like I always just felt like I ha I was like a little bit slower and like didn't just have as much spirit and as much energy. And it kind of makes sense seeing my my part of spirit in the 12th house because the 12th house mm. can swallow up, um, especially in a fire sign. Like 12th house can swallow that energy up and conserve it for itself and have more of a reclusive energy. So that that kind of gives me a nice little ping there. Mm. Yeah, and you're 12. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something else I was looking at when I was reading about part of fortune is that if or you want to know, yeah, sorry, part of fortune and part of spirit. I was reading both yeah. of them. They, if you want to know if you have like a well placed part of fortune, mm -hmm. It's like the angular houses for Helianist, Helianistic. I know, I'm sorry. Helen, <laughs> Hellenistic. Hellenistic <laughs> astrology. So first, fourth, tenth, seventh. Do you like yeah, that? So, that? Yeah, so that's order. beautiful. In <laughs> Hellenistic astrology has good places and bad places. And places is another word for houses. And the bad places are the second, the sixth, the eighth, and the twelfth 
houses. Um, any placements there are known to be like, these are maybe where you're going to struggle a little bit more. And um, like planets in those houses are going to be a little bit harder for you to access or gain benefits from. And then there are the joyful places. And then yeah, angular houses are also known to be because those are so like, right in front and center, and you're going to see those those are very dynamic houses. Yeah, focal points. But mind you, it's like when we talk about squares, it's not like you're doomed if it's in there. It's like an opportunity mm-hmm. and just all of that. It's is- different energy. It's maybe like it's a little more frictional energy. But, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes like, I don't know, thinking about like friction, if you think about like creating something like using sandpaper to, you know, if you if you create something really easy with like, a you know, cutting wood or something, okay, I made this and it's done. But then it's like, no, that friction of sanding it is what's going to make it smooth and into something beautiful. And so it's like that friction is needed and it's not enjoyable. But then mm-hmm. like the end result is so good. So it's just like a different way of looking at that energy. And I also loved this quote from AminoApps.com where it, like comparing the part of fortune and the part of spirit, the quote is that, um, well, the lot of fortune says, I need, I wish. And the lot of spirit says, I do it. I realize this need. And that's something that I like both the word realize as like, oh, I understand now. And also realize as in like come to fruition. Like I realize something, you know, when you make it happen. Mm-hmm. And so I like the idea of looking into our part of fortune as what it is that you, what you need, what you're wishing for. It's that moon energy. It's that emotional uh, fulfillment, even, you know, where you're getting when you have that, that moon and that like fortune coming together, but then the spirit sun coming together is like, all right. And now I'm acting on it. I realize that I'm doing it. There's, there's that external energy we were talking about coming up with the part of spirit. Mm -hmm. and do we want to talk about like us real quick and how that relates to us because again when we especially with these kind of conceptual uh you know astrology topics I feel like when Mm. we relate it to ourselves personally it's sometimes the best way that we can explain how they can show up so should we dive into our part of spirits yeah Yeah. let's do it well all right here I go so I've got (laughs) I've got my part of spirit in Libra, which is in the 10th house, which is an angular house. It's at 25 degrees. So it's not it's not conjunct my midheaven, but it is in my 10th house, which is very interesting because I definitely do. It's funny how maybe you're like, you're I, you're a very spirited person. I'm like, well, I suppose mm-hmm. the world would see that if it shows up. Yeah, in my yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, and for it to be in Libra, just like with people and with you know harmony and it's it's not I don't know when you have because my midheaven is in Libra and so that shows up as being that peacekeeper and being that mediator and also being that like you know social person but that can show up as a midheaven but then having the part of spirit there I feel like I'm almost like aggressively so you know where I'm like (laughs) we can all get along guys this is great everybody come on don't you want all of us to be great here you know no but you can do it you can do the thing that's hard to do (laughs) and I feel like because I do have a Libra midheaven but I also definitely I don't have the um Maybe the typical quote unquote harmony that Libra brings when it comes to executing that that need for justice. Mm. There's a lot of energy behind it. Yeah, because you have like Sag and Cap, but I still think you do come at it every situation. So Libra, like anytime you like put your foot down at something, you're so aware of like, everything else like you're never hurtful or like anything like that you're like okay this is like just what's supposed to be said it's justice thank you yeah I mean maybe that's like but maybe that is how it would show up in the 10th house being you know a larger public like I am I feel I do feel very aware that you can't just say the thing that you're feeling because there's like (laughs) there's an image that you have to look after I think that Libra cares about image and 10th right. house cares about image, you know, where I I don't want to be, I never want to be, I guess, misquoted or remember when Sierra said, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm very aware <laughs> that I want to come off as neutral and as understanding as possible, because I feel like that's the best way to keep 
to keep myself in that position of mediator. You know, mediator is mm-hmm. a very, um, it's a very tough position to be in. And if you mess up once, then people remember that. And why would they trust you after that? You know, so I feel like I'm glad that my part of spirit comes out there because it's this, you know, uh, extra hype of tapping into that energy, maybe. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, interesting like that. then because it's square your natal moon as well. So that's also like a major pressure that you put on yourself. And that's, oh my that's God, very Capricorn. So it is you're like can't mess up once or everyone will hate you or remember (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) you say that a little bit joking but that's my inner monologue (laughs) i know know. oh that's so true so again look at what it's aspecting when you you know are looking at your part of spirit too because yeah mine is almost exactly squaring my moon and so Mm -hmm. too there's there's much more it's there's so much at stake for a public you know persona but for that emotional like inner inner feelings that if I do mess up or if somebody is hurt by something if that Libra balance is off scale at all it's going to activate such a deep self-loathing that (laughs) it's very you know but it's that's where we're talking about like you know difficult placements and square is considered difficult but that's where you know I am going to get once I dive like you know as I work on diving into that and and work on that friction I think you know I'll learn a lot from it so I'm definitely going to take that away from mm-hmm. from this episode to dive into that square a little bit more and then Mimi yeah you have 19 degree Leo in yeah. the 12th house yeah, or first. For Placidus, it's in the 12th yeah. and then in whole sign, it's the first. But I figure since, you know, I kind of stuck with um, Placidus for a part of fortune, maybe maybe we'll stick with Placidus for the Arabian part series. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm here to learn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so similar to like kind of how I had already mentioned that like swallowed up sense of spirit, I feel like I can have um, it takes me a little bit. It takes me a lot of energy to like show excitement and to be really like all right let's do this and it takes a lot of energy and I think that's very much the 12th house and and then you see that it's also in a t-square with the two benefics so both Venus and Jupiter it's like in this t-square to them and I can see that in that my and those are in the 10th and 4th house I very much like to appear consistent and stable and reliable Mm. and I think that the Leo in the 12th house is very much not that is not about being reliable the 12th house is not consistent and I I think the best way that I can tap into Leo 12th house part of spirit is knowing that my like spiritual guidance comes from a need to express myself in the most deep and spiritual way and um, to do that comes vulnerability and comes the mess that is being like a human and is being like a soul learning human things on this planet. And so I can see how that square to both Venus and Jupiter in the mostly Venus in Taurus in the 10th house, wanting to, you know, offer reliability and stability to others, how that part of spirit is challenging it a little bit and being like, well, what if you didn't? And what if you just showed your mess? And maybe that's the best way for you to be reliable to others too so i don't know that's the yeah. only way that i've really connected to it oh, i love that it, expressing that authenticity other than just expressing what you think people want to see i also think it's interesting talking about part of spirit because i think it's um like our spirit as humans is so mm-hmm. strong when we're children and i feel like you were so leo energy ex- expression as a child and like theater and all of the typical leo things so it's <laughs> it's just funny and then we grow up into that social pressure with that t-square of 10th and 4th like okay now i want to shift and just actually be reliable rather than all of the sides of leo yeah i, I definitely can feel that as well i can see how leo energy is very much like a a long journey for me to connect to in that 12th house way of it's not on show it's like for me to connect to and then to translate in whatever way feels authentic to me or feels like it's coming from my heart space rather than in a more performative way Mm -hmm. but then if you see in whole sign in the first then dang go to that open mind there's my career yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the, okay. So like spirit, this, you know, soul, uh, I don't know, inner, like this fire, this kingly energy. And, and it is so associated with Leo when we think about, we're talking about a sun energy here and that is the ruler of Leo and that's what you have. But then you have it like in this example here in the 12th house, which is so much more mysterious and closed off. And it's almost like, I think there's lots of pieces of your chart that it's not duality in a Gemini way, but it's in a, I can exist being more than one thing. And and that is consistent actually, because I'm constantly more than one thing. And mm -hmm. it seems like that, that pulls in here with this part of spirit where it's like, when you need to 12th house recluse it, and when you need mm -hmm. to Leo shine it, they are both authentic to you. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like that when you, when you find that balance, maybe that's that cheerleader, you know? Yeah. And I will say too, like on a very tangible and like upfront way, like thinking about spirit being in the 12th house of, um, which is like a bad place in Hellenistic astrology. It's the house of depression, which we know I have, like, how accurate is that, that my spirit gets swallowed up by you know, this mental spiral or by chronic depression, by chronic anxiety and, and all of these things. So if you're looking for um, something to just sort of validate a little bit of your mental health experience, and you have your part of spirit or any of these parts in your 12th house, or maybe any 12th house placements, that's sort of how I relate to it too. I used to feel so bad about myself for not having like that spiritedness and that excitement and yeah, I'll plan that party or yeah, I'll be there and all of that stuff, just not having the energy. I used to feel so bad about it. And um, I mean, I don't anymore. And then seeing this placement just kind of solidifies and like validates a little bit of that experience for me. So I'll say that that was really nice to Love recognize. That. Do you have that inner spirit in your inner world? I think I have it just for me and, yeah. um, and it is trying my son in Aries. So I do feel like this is very much, a uh, a path. And like, <laughs> when we look at it in career goals, like what a great chart placement for an entrepreneur, like that can work from home and be a recluse and, you know, and just work for themselves and do what, what feels good for them. So, you know, I can see how it works really well for that too. Yeah. And an aspect to like Venus in your 10th, like that's just a kind of ideal. Yeah. Yeah. That my career like pushes it. Yes. Mm -hmm. We actually all have like spirit, like part of fortune or part of spirit in our like aspecting or like talking to our 10th house, mm -hmm. which I yeah. think is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because Martha, you've got 28 degrees Virgo in the fourth house for mm -hmm. your part of spirit. And it's opposite your part of fortune by like three degrees. I, I don't and, know what it yeah. means, but I love it. <laughs> the opposite, exact opposition. <laughs> almost exact. And with my, it's almost exact opposition to my Saturn. So mm -hmm. once again, I'm coming back in my life to that story of like chug a lug lug. <laughs> do, do. that classic story of chug -a -lug classic -lug. tale <laughs> of chug -a -lug -lug. i i don't know that's just how i see virgo like okay do it for everyone else like i don't know i don't know if it's so much do it for everyone else but it's being fulfilled by being of service and knowing that you are a contributing factor to the success of the group yes uh, yes chug -a -lug -a -lug. Chug a lug a lug lug. Yeah, you just have <laughs> like a, a lot of Virgo going on lately. It's mm. also just like details. Virgo is details. Virgo notices the little things, and Virgo realizes like it. It can be seen as like the mundane and you know the repetitive, but it's also like the little things are what keep us going. The little things actually are what make us happiest sometimes. You know, yes, like a big vacation is so exciting, but sometimes we put so much pressure on that and lots of planning and then it gets stressful. But then it's like your partner bringing you like a bouquet of flowers as a surprise. It's like, that's a little thing in comparison to like a big vacation. And sometimes that makes all the difference. I feel like Virgo energy is the really detailed little things that like when you realize that it's, it's the tiny stuff over time that really makes up the big stuff and so having that be the spirit of you where maybe if you do feel like oh i need to make a big change and it's like well actually i've been making little changes 
little by little by little. And that's what's adding up to something big. Cause I feel like that's something, you know, that, that you can find that career push that, that good energy, that external force from is like, I'm doing, I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking is very Virgo too, you know? I'm tweaking. Yeah. I'm just like Mm -hmm. always self bettering in the goal to help others and that being in the fourth house too of like your emotional needs so your guiding spirit is acting from a place of the purest of your emotional needs does that do you feel like that resonates like that is something that you work from yeah I think I always work from my emotional needs and I also think like having Virgo and and the fourth like that with these placements opposite my Saturn and the part of fortune and stuff. It's so much of like tampering my emotions and like having some sort of control or like Mm. routine checkup of self, um, which I'm still trying to master. Mm. And I, I, I really don't love the word detail for Virgo, which I know sounds so... I, they are detail oriented, but I'm not at all. But for mon- mundane life, I do do all the little things and see all the little things that yeah, my partner do. would never even think of in a million years. I'm like, did you wipe the baseboards down? Like, just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking quick, like example. Mm. But when it comes to detail and like other things, I'm not very detail oriented, but like just in life, I'm not like... Mm. I don't see it in work and stuff like that. If you're a future employer, like don't Virgo... listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I feel like Virgo also is so um, you know, connected with devotion. And I think that devotion is something that you definitely exude whenever you are when you're feeling, you know, something that's bringing you good things when you are feeling that inner spirit I think you do devote yourself to it it's not a part-time something it's devotional which is very Virgo yeah it's Mm. yeah I yeah I think my chart in general is just like signs me up to be like in it to win it or you're not in it at all like I I have all of the most intense top three basically (laughs) <laughs> and then I have like these Virgo placements and Pisces placements that are just like, you need to give your life and your soul, blood, sweat, and tears to this. Mm, con- yeah. <laughs> or constantly. you're shitty. <laughs> oh. Well, that's yeah, how I, I mean, this like, internal. this Virgo Pisces <laughs> axis is so active, like, so highlighted for you. It, it's like your Saturn, your Chiron, this part of fortune, this part of spirit. And it's all, yeah, in those angular houses of 10th and 4th house. Like, yeah, I don't know. That's like so. I, I have nothing to add. I'm just saying Me facts either. that we've yeah. already said out loud. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's something I will be consistently working through all my life, I think. Mm. Yeah, and for it being that fuel, for being that fire, uh, that way in which we point to career goals, it's it's just very, it's something to think on. It's something to sit with. It's something to, you know, cause sometimes we have those little epiphany moments where, you know, I'm sitting here like at first talking about details and like devotion just came to me. I'm like, of course, Virgo's devotion and Martha is so devotional. You know, I think it's, it, it'll come to you too, when you're sitting with it. And especially when you relate it to everything else that's happening in your chart. And when you relate it to your part of fortune, because like Martha, you've got like almost an like exact opposite. I've got like a, a loose trine going on with my part of fortune being in Aquarius, my part of spirit being mm-hmm. in Libra. And then Mimi, you've got a square, right? No, my part of fortune is in Virgo. So they're in total aversion. Oh, okay. So then that's something too, to like, okay, well, (laughs) we're not talking any of the same languages here. So like, Mm -hmm. what do I, where do, what other placements do I pull from for that activation? You know, Mm -hmm. just something to look at holistically. Wait, I did just think of a way that it really shows up though. Remember like, I don't know, probably like eight months ago, I was talking to you both and I was like, or maybe just you, Mimi, because we're talking about skincare or something. I was like, when I have a skincare routine, I'm doing a lot better in life, which sounds insane, but it's not about the skincare. It's about the routine. (laughs) Yeah, not me before recording, like literally doing my skincare so that I feel good while recording. (laughs) (laughs) But the reasoning behind, very different. It's like 
every night before bed, you wash your face. Mm -hmm. Just that. Just the routine. The rule? Because it's the rule. rule and mm -hmm. I stuck with it and I didn't break it and I can be consistent with myself. Mm. It's the same with my breakfast. Like mm. I eat the same thing every day. It's like I am. This is what grounds me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, routine. It has nothing being to do the with thing like anything else that grounds you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like when I go on vacation now, I'm like, bring your skincare so that you still do it before every like before bed. Like, don't mess up your routine. Yeah, not to take because if you slip, it's hard to get back home for me. Oh yeah. That opposition yeah, with Pisces, that. like, I'm, like, confused about routine sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about well, it through the signs now? Yeah, let's go through the yeah, signs. Yeah, let's do it. So the part of spirit in Aries, the spiritual essence is dynamic and courageous, and it's seeking individual growth and initiating new spiritual experiences. Wait, I also wanted to say this shout out chat GPT. This is where oh, these little again. blurbs are from part of spirit in taurus the spiritual essence is grounded and seeks stability finding spiritual fulfillment through a deep connection to nature and material comforts part of spirit in gemini the spiritual essence is curious and adaptable seeking enlightenment through communication learning and exchanging ideas oh i love that enlightenment came up because that's very sun as well like where we find yeah. enlightenment yeah mm -hmm. i love that part of spirit in cancer the spiritual essence is nurturing and intuitive and it's finding spiritual fulfillment through emotional connections family and a sense of belonging part of spirit in leo the spiritual essence is creative and expressive seeking self-realization through passion self-confidence and artistic pursuits Yep. Hmm. love that do you connect with that Mimi yeah absolutely like the um self-realization 1000% like the things that I do to express myself while like as a Leo rising like if I didn't have Leo rising I feel like I really wouldn't give two shits if other people saw what I did or how I expressed myself I think because I also have the Leo rising that like my deep desire to express every little bit of me wants to be seen in some way but anyway mm. I really yeah that resonated yeah all right part of spirit in Virgo the spiritual essence is practical and detail oriented finding spiritual fulfillment through service self-improvement and attention to health mm. so there we go what we yeah. talked about that yeah Part of spirit in Libra, the spiritual essence is harmonious and seeks balance, finding spiritual fulfillment through relationships, partnerships, and aesthetic pursuits. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, <laughs> oh, aesthetic pursuits, just like, yes, yeah. yes. I didn't connect I that feel... we, all oh, three good. of our part of spirits are like right in succession yes. of each other, you know, yeah. Leo, oh, yeah. Libra. So good. Oh my God, <laughs> that, that aesthetics comment just made everything for me though, because I didn't even think about that when I was thinking Libra and man, do I feel lit up when things are aesthetically beautiful? <laughs> like, Oh yes. Even yeah. you like yeah. your bags and your clothes and stuff like that. You like love aesthetics like that. Oh, I love any, I just love, I love pretty things. Pretty love pretty things. things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love pretty things. <laughs> Part of spirit in Scorpio, the spiritual essence is transformative, seeks deep understanding Finding spiritual fulfillment through self-discovery, occult learning, and emotional intensity. <laughs> mm. It's me. Hi. Part of spirit <laughs> in Sagittarius. The spiritual essence is expansive and seeks wisdom. Finding spiritual fulfillment through travel, higher education, and philosophical pursuits. Part of spirit in Capricorn. The spiritual essence is disciplined and ambitious. Seeking spiritual fulfillment through hard work, structure, and achieving long-term goals. Mm. Part of spirit in Aquarius, the spiritual essence is progressive and seeks individuality, finding spiritual fulfillment through innovation, social causes, and intellectual pursuits. Makes sense, makes sense. Mm -hmm. And to end it off on Pisces, part of spirit in Pisces, the spiritual essence is compassionate and intuitive, seeking spiritual fulfillment through creativity, spirituality, and a connection to the divine. Mm. Mm. And I think because these are very nice and um, 
like bringing it back to the root of each sign you could even do that for the houses too like if you really resonated uh with part of spirit in cancer and you have your part of spirit in the fourth house but in a different sign then you know take that into account that that may have been influencing you know may influence you as well you reading my mind because <laughs> literally I, I was like I so much more relate to the cancer than the other one <laughs> well I think like I loved that in the part of spirit in Virgo description that self-improvement was involved there because I I think that we often like forget that Virgo is always seeking like a purity of self and sometimes that's going to show up through like constant self-improvement and I and then it being in your fourth house, I think you're like constantly learning from your emotional needs and constantly improving the way that you take care of your emotional needs. And and when you do that, you have, you know, fortune brought to you. I agree. I didn't mean to go into time. another ramble about myself, but no, Leo, well, I wanted to say that earlier anyway. <laughs> no, I wanted to say it earlier. <laughs> So let us know how you connect to these, um, if you connect to them or, you know, if you need help calculating them, we are, we're available. Yeah. And again, like play with this in relation to your part of fortune, you know, see it as the yin and yang energy, that sun and moon energy, internal, external, and see if they do relate to one another in your chart. If they are having a conversation through an aspect or not at all, see what else is activating them, what energy you can pull from, from like those personality traits that, you know, we talk about with the planets in general, because this seems to be much more of that portal energy, like we talk about and how we can get access to it how it can fuel us so see what other energies are talking with it and maybe then that'll help you figure out how that activation can come to light mm -hmm. well thank you both for for teaching me about this this was so nice to sort of sit back and just listen a little bit and and understand so this was a three-way thing this was a three-way yeah. thing all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> hardcore <laughs> three -way I'm glad you think so <laughs> uh, well martha why do we talk about the part of spirit today because the stars made us do it <laughs>